during World War II, I was employed as a teacher in Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1943. That was when I started. And Bridgeport, Connecticut was geared up completely for every kind of war work you could imagine. Bridgeport Brass was making shell casings. We had two aircraft factories, Chansvrat and Sigorsky. My first helicopter I ever saw was that fall because it was built in Sigorsky's factory. It was the first helicopter probably that had been flown in the United States was built there. And of course, one of the kinds of planes they built were dive bombers. And so day after day, particularly as the war went on, we would hear them testing day and night as well. The planes would be going and so we heard that over and over and over again. And it became, we became so accustomed to it, we didn't even think about it. And when in May 1945, the news came that the war was over in Europe. They stopped testing for 24 hours in celebration. It was the most eerie feeling because we didn't hear them testing, testing, testing. It was just quiet. It seemed like it was absolutely quiet. It was so eerie, the silence. <laughs> we could hardly get used to it. When the children prayed those mornings in morning worship, and we knew toward the end of the war that they had developed some kind of missiles that could go long distances. And we knew that if they could succeed in getting them to go across to the United States, we knew well enough that Bridgeport would be one of the places that would be sure to bomb, hit. And when we prayed those mornings, it wasn't just, dear Lord, bless the missionaries and the co porters and all that. It was, dear Lord, we need you to take care of us. Prayer had a meaning that it hadn't had before. <laughs> 